Good morning. Welcome to worship on this glorious day. We are so glad to be together. Let us begin with our call to worship. Praise to our creator. Holy, Holy is your, your name. name. Praise God's loving kindness. Holy, Holy is your name. name. Praise our maker's mercy. Holy, Holy is your, your name. name. our sins before God and one another. Guiding God, you, you have, have shown, shown us how, how to live a good life, life. Yet, yet we, we think, think we, we can do better on our own. We do not honor you or our neighbors, instead choosing to follow our selfish desires. We long to be free and yet hold others' wrongs against us. Release, Release us from, from this endless cycle of guilt and poor, and poor choices. choices. Restore, Restore us to yourself again for, for the sake, sake of Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Dear friends, we are God's beloved children, and we have been forgiven. Now live in the joy which this grace provides and share the good news with others. Amen. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, your, your name, name is sacred, sacred and, and precious. precious. May, May we cherish it, it by, by calling upon you with, with sincerity and proclaiming your goodness to all the earth. For the, for the sake, sake of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, kids. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at. Today, we're going to start a uh, new series, and we're talking about, well, prayer, all right? You know, if you ever ask somebody, how do I pray? Sounds kind of like a crazy question in a way, but, you know, there's a lot of people that, that aren't really sure what is the right way for me to pray, and that's actually not a new question. It's a question that was even brought up in Jesus' day. Jesus was asked that question, how should we pray? And Jesus gave the people of his day and all of us today a very special prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer. We say it every Sunday as part of our worship service, right? And, and, and Jesus gave us this prayer because Jesus wanted us to understand how important 
prayer is, but also, what is prayer for, okay? You know, is, are we praying because it's something that we have to do? Well, back in Jesus' time, when he was a little boy growing up, the whole idea of being able to pray was something that you had to do. That was, they called it an obligation. But when Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer, he taught the Lord's Prayer not as something that you had to do, but something that you wanted to do. It was the way that you could talk to God. And so when Jesus taught the prayer, he taught, he taught the prayer to begin with saying, holy is your name, or hallowed be your name, God. What does that mean? It sounds kind of weird, right? Hallowed be your name? Well, what it means is that God's name, all right, God's name is precious. God's name is one of the most wonderful things to say. And for a long time, the Jewish people didn't even know how to say God's name. They didn't even know how to express it. It was just too holy, all right? It was just too awesome to say. So Jesus teaches us or reminds us that the name of God is still so awesome. And he also teaches us that, that saying God's name, praying directly to God, means that we're reaching out to a God that loves us, to a God who wants to hear our voice speaking God's name. That's why Jesus taught the prayer. That's why Jesus teaches it with the beginning of saying, our Father who art in heaven Hallowed be your name. Because Jesus wants us always to remember that we don't have a God who's far away. We got a God that's very close. So close, in fact, God wants us to speak his name. To call on him when things are going really good. To call on him when we're afraid, when things aren't going all that good. And in our Lord's Prayer, we are reminded that through everything that we do, God is with us. And to know that God is with us, well, I think that's just as awesome as being able to say God's name, don't you? So I hope over these next few weeks, kids, as we talk about the Lord's Prayer, you practice your prayers. You practice not only learning the Lord's Prayer, but you also practice just knowing that you can pray to God anytime. Not because you have to, but because you want to. And because God really loves to hear us speak to Him. Keep up praying. We'll see you next week. Our scripture text for not just this week, but for our series that we're beginning this week comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter. And it's really just um, three verses. It's chapter or Luke 11, verses 2 through 4. He said to them, when you pray, pray, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Well, friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we begin our final summer series, and we turn to something that's very well known to us. Um, something that we do every week. We're going to turn to the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, which is something that we learned a long time ago. The Lord's Prayer is something we recite in our worship service. The Lord's Prayer that I think sometimes we kind of take it for granted because we know it so well. So we want to spend these next few weeks kind of dissecting each piece of the Lord's Prayer. We're going to hear the same scripture text repeatedly um, simply because 
we want to take the time to really reflect on the purpose behind the Lord's Prayer. Why the Lord's Prayer was given and how the Lord's Prayer really encompasses everything that we need to ask from God and invite God to do with us, for us, and through us. So we start today by thinking about the purpose of prayer. When Jesus was asked the question, how should we pray? His response was this form of prayer, this Lord's Prayer. Now, you need to understand that for the Jewish people in Jesus' day, what had happened to prayer was prayer moved away from being something that you offered whenever you wanted to talk to God to instead being really an obligation. It was laid out, this is when you pray, this is what you pray, this is how you do it. So it might sound kind of strange for us that somebody would ask Jesus, how do we pray? But it really wasn't all that strange because prayer had gotten such, had gotten such so wrapped up into the law that, that prayer was not something that just was a spontaneous thing, something spontaneous like you and I do today. Um, when, when we offer up a prayer to God, uh, a prayer of comfort, a, a prayer of thanksgiving, whatever it might be. For the Jewish believers, this was something that they were obligated to do. Now, the very first thing Jesus does is he takes away that sense of obligation. When Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer, he didn't teach the Lord's Prayer as something we were obligated to do. The Lord's Prayer was given so that we had the, the, the format of, of how to do an all-encompassing prayer. So, so Jesus begins this prayer by focusing the attention on something that was lost, reflecting on the power and the holiness of the name of God. Now, just so you understand what that is, Go back and think about our stories from the Old Testament. Think about especially Moses. When Moses is in the wilderness and there is the burning bush, and Moses is called to lead the people of Israel, and Moses asks the question, who should I say sent me? And the response of the voice of God was, I am. In the Hebrew, that word, I am, or those words, I am, were, were written in such a way that they were almost unrecognizable in how you would say it. But if it was uttered, it would be everyone stopping what they were doing and praising and giving thanks and bowing down to God. That statement, I am, comes up again in the New Testament. It'll happen on the night in which Jesus is betrayed. When Jesus is going to be brought into custody, they ask the question, are you Jesus of Nazareth? And Jesus' response was in that ancient language. Jesus doesn't say, I am he. Jesus utters the words, I am. And if you remember in the story or in the account of what took place, once Jesus said that, his captive, his capturers all fell to the ground in worship. God's name was originally given to be the most awesome name ever, the most holy, the most revered name. We, in the Hebrew language, to make it easier for the Jewish believers to say God's name, they translated it in Hebrew. Uh, we say Jehovah, right? We, that's how we say it. That's what you, uh, you hear songs about Jehovah. Um, but actually, in the Hebrew, if you read it in the Hebrew, there really isn't any consonants that are used. It's, it's like a breath that comes through. 
So I want you to try that with me. As you think about God, as you think about this holy name of God, instead of saying Jehovah, let's do it the way the Hebrew actually has it written and how we would pronounce it. All right? So, so listen carefully. Again, you want to make sure you don't use any of the consonants. So it's Yahoah. Yahoah. You can feel it. When you say it, you can feel it. It's like this, this, this whisper breath that comes out of you. Yehovah. That was the holy name. That was the name that brought people into an understanding that God was so much bigger than anything they could possibly imagine. So when Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer, he begins by bringing us back to the reminder that the name of God is one of the most holy and precious things we can say. But again, remember what I said? When Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer, he doesn't teach it to be an obligation. So what is new and exciting about this is that Jesus is giving us the reminder of how we should say that holy name and we can speak it to this loving, caring God. You know, many describe the Lord's Prayer being laid out by Jesus as a conversation of the, from the Son to the Father. And then inviting you and me in to praying that same prayer, that we are actually praying the prayer to a parent. And God is, that's one of the attributes of God. God is an awesome parent. God is the parent that, that wants what is best for us. God is the parent that loves us unconditionally. And while that illustration of the parent is such a wonderful illustration, we also want to recognize that when Jesus taught this, he didn't want us to simply stop on saying that holy name and connecting it to a loving parent. He wanted us to understand the whole of God. And I think that helps people today. I mean, some of us today have not had necessarily the best examples of a loving parent. So if we just sit and say, this is a prayer from a child to a parent, that makes some people feel a little uneasy because they don't understand that connection. Jesus didn't limit it to that. Jesus wanted us to recognize that holy of holy names because that name cannot be pigeonholed into one little understanding. Yes, God is a loving parent. But Jehovah was more than that. It was that name that brought life into the creation. We pray the Lord's Prayer to our awesome Creator. Yehovah. Yehovah, who, who not only was our creator, but when the human creation stepped away, he also was the disciplinarian. The one who said, you need to learn from that mistake. Didn't desert us. Didn't turn away from us, but also held us accountable. That holy name, Jehovah, the one who keeps you and me accountable to what we do. That's why we pray his name. That's why we say, hallowed, holy is your name. But again, we don't want to limit it to just that. There is so much that this God, this holy name, does. As we begin looking at the Lord's Prayer, we begin by really reflecting on the Lord that we pray it to, the God that we lift it up to. When you say that prayer later in our service this morning, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what and who are you praying to? How big is God in your life? How important is this God that we pray to 
in the midst of our service. How important is God to you? How much of an asset is it for you to know that this God is here and present in your life? Yehovah. Yehovah. A holy, holy name. A name that you and I are invited to pray. To pray prayers of thanksgiving, to pray prayers of need, to pray a prayer even out of desperation. And that holy of holy hears the prayers. This week, pray to your God. In our service today, think about all the things that God has given and has directed you to do. And as we go through this study over these next few weeks, I pray that you will discover something new, something exciting, something meaningful and powerful in something that has become too familiar for us. And maybe at the end, the Lord's Prayer will again be just as powerful in transforming us as it was the first time we learned how to pray it. Amen.
the church, the world, and all those in need. You have given us a way to talk to you which shows us how close you hold us. May we give to your name the honor you deserve, cherishing you with our hearts and lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. As the summer ends, we recognize the one who creates and brings all things full circle. We thank you for times of rest, recreation, fun, and growth. We prepare ourselves for a new cycle to begin, knowing that you watch over us in all circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Even as your name is holy, so is everything you have made. Help us to honor our original covenant to care for all living creatures, protecting their their habitants and ensuring their humane treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. When we feel most alone, your spirit remains with us to remind us of your never-ending presence. Bring your healing power to all those who need it most this day. Especially, we pray for the sick in body, mind, or spirit, those experiencing medical tests or surgeries or treatments, those experiencing COVID. Dear Lord, we pray for answers and healing and recovering. And dear Lord, we pray for those who feel the pain of racism and for their communities trying to recover from past riots and history. We pray for those who are experiencing marital difficulties and damaged relationships. We pray for those who are grieving, those on our prayer list, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that when this earthly life is through, you will bring us to be with, with you and with all those whom we love but have lost. Until that day, may we be faithful children who live out our mercy, out your mercy on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We have asked and you have heard us. Gather all these prayers into your merciful keeping and make, make us grateful that you allow us to address you directly, even though you are the creator of the universe. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah. And let us pray as Jesus taught us so long ago. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us, us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
dear friends, remember that we are the church wherever we may be. So go in love and peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.